Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Second Mitsubishi MRJ test aircraft takes flight. Blue Origin planning an intentional failure on a test flight. Sitka, Alaska takes care of its seaplane pilots. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 2nd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries announced that they've conducted the first flight of the second flight test aircraft of their Mitsubishi Regional Jet, commonly referred to as the MRJ. The aircraft took off from Nagoya Airport and confirmed its basic characteristics and functionality in airspace off the Pacific Coast. According to Mitsubishi, this airplane will carry out flight tests primarily to confirm MRJ's performances in the future. Mitsubishi Aircraft and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries are scheduled to establish their main base for flight testing this summer at Grant County International Airport at Moses Lake, Washington State. They are targeting delivery of the first MRJ aircraft in mid-2018. Stand by for hard impact were the words uttered by the mission control to the astronauts aboard Apollo 15 in 1971 when it landed in the ocean on only two of its three parachutes inflated. Everything worked out fine, and now Blue Origin will be making a test of similar occurrence with their crew capsule. Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos said in an email last week, that the next flight of the New Shepard, the fourth for this particular booster, will carry a mock-up crew capsule as usual. But this time, a failure of one of the three parachutes is planned. GeekWire reports that Bezos said in an email that on the next mission, we'll execute additional maneuvers on both the crew capsule and the booster to increase our vehicle characterization and modeling accuracy. The email also said it promises to be an exciting demonstration. A feature of the Blue Origin crew capsule that the Apollo capsule did not have is the ability to control the landing through the firing of a retro thrust system. This test brings Blue Origin another step closer to its targeted 2017 manned flight tests. After the break, seaplane dock to be repaired. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. General aviation pilots always love it when their airport gets fixed up, but the, this repair is about a different kind of airport. The City Assembly of Sitka, Alaska has voted to fund repairs to the city seaplane dock, which has been condemned over the winter. The dock had been deemed unusable after one of the pilings crumbled. Radio station KCAW reports that when that happened, the main float for the 50-year-old dock drifted away from the structure, and the harbor master said that the end piece of the dock was unrepairable. A new seaplane dock has been proposed for the north end of Japonski Island, but until it can be built, the Port and Harbors Commission said pilots need a place to park their seaplanes. So the existing dock will be repaired at an estimated cost of about $170,000. Alaska takes care of their seaplane pilots. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. Last week we discussed the concept of our Airborne Partnership Initiative. This week we'll provide a synopsis of the building process.
The Airborne Partner Initiative is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic, industry-wide aviation aerospace news program. It is no longer simply enough to make our business successful. It's our intent to build a successful structure by which this business and our valued partners can collectively have a positive impact on the industry that isn't possible on an individual basis. A partnership between ANN and others in the aviation aerospace industry offers more exposure, a greatly lessened strain on individual resources, and the pivotal advantage of starting out with what is already a solid, professional award-winning platform, which is Airborne Unlimited. Partners will have the ability to disseminate their near-immediate breaking news with each daily program and grow their outreach among their constituency and well beyond. All of this with the professional look and comprehensive reach of Airborne Unlimited. Most of all, as swiftly as Airborne has grown in the last few years into what we now call Airborne Unlimited, our expansion efforts are seeing exceptional success, which allow our partner organizations to reach far more than their conventional audience. The Airborne Partnership Initiative is built through the recognition that aviation and aerospace needs a common voice that speaks within and beyond the aeroverse we occupy. After these messages, DARPA to select a team in satellite launch competition. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Batch. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency announced a deadline for selecting the team that will design a spacecraft capable of delivering satellites to orbit 10 times in 10 days. The three competing teams are Boeing with Blue Origin, Masten Space Systems with x and Northrop Grumman with Virgin Galactic. Hartzell Propella has appointed Intercontinental Jet Service as a recommended service facility. Based in Oklahoma at Tulsa International Airport, Intercontinental Jet Service's Propeller Shop provides overhaul and repair services for the Central Plains. Initial deployment of the KC-46 Pegasus Aerial Refueling Aircraft has been delayed due to boom system challenges. Deployment to their training base at Altus Air Force Base in Oklahoma is now scheduled for summer or fall of 2017. The Academy of Model Aeronautics announced that a new exhibit at the National Model Aviation Museum will be on display until Labor Day this year. Bill Chaffee's Boeing B-12B scale model airplane is a historic national prize winner from the year 1930. Viking Air Limited has appointed Aerol Geo of Krasnoyarsk, Russia as the first Russian-based factory endorsed service center. Viking reports that they are well respected and will join the Twin Otter Series 400 and Legacy de Havilland support network. Well, that's it for today's trip around the batch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. It looks like the Joint Land Attack Cruise Missile Defense Elevated and Edit Sensor System, also known as JLENS, will now be known as Defunct. Of the four congressional committees that are crafting the defense budget, the Senate Appropriations Committee zeroed out the Errol Stat that was intended to help detect and track missiles 
heading inbound to Washington, D.C. The other committees are expected to follow suit. The Army said that the tethered aerostat was also capable of detecting swarming boats and other vehicles. But one of the airships flying over the Aberdeen Proving Ground near Baltimore, Maryland, broke its tether last fall and flew several hundred miles, knocking out power in Maryland and Pennsylvania with the trailing tether before finally landing in a field. Congressional support for Jalen's dried up after the runway incident. Funding for Raytheon's Jalen's has been cut in fiscal year 2016 as well. So the Army has had the system in storage rather than flying. We will update you if it shows up on eBay. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry, associations, and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.